Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. How far would you go for attention? Trying to go viral appears to be what led to the death of this young man. Pedro Ruiz died in Halstead, Minnesota yesterday. His aunt telling us he was trying to film a stunt that involved shooting a gun to a book he was holding. He was doing it in the hopes of becoming internet famous. Valley News team's Cornelius Hawker introduces us to others who know about internet fame and say parents should remind their kids it's not worth risking your life. It all started, um, we bought a camera and decided to start recording all the stuff that we usually did in our daily lives. Jake, Justin, and Grant are students at NDSU and they know a thing or two about internet fame. Their YouTube account, Seaboys TV, has racked up somewhere between six and seven million views, but they don't let that go to their head or put them in danger. We never put our lives at risk. Uh, we have many years ahead of us, and that's way more important than a few million views on YouTube. They say hearing about Pedro Ruiz's death, which happened because he was trying to get followers and views, is sad. Obviously, they weren't planning on, um, no one plans on a stunt like that going wrong. They share a message that they say everyone needs to hear. Be smart about your stupid. Yeah, that's the most important thing about any part of your life is if you're going to do something that's even marginally outside of your comfort zone, make sure you're going about it in a safe and smart way. Jake, Justin, and Grant tell us their YouTube channel is just a side business with their friends. They don't encourage others to try and follow in the steps of any popular internet personalities because they say fame on the internet is fleeting and usually something you can't make a career out of. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. In the death of 20-year-old Pedro Ruiz, his girlfriend, also a 20-year-old, is being held on charges of firing a gun recklessly. Mona L Lisa Perez is believed to have shot Ruiz with a 50 caliber handgun. Coming up after weather and another, another shooting incident in Minnesota, one man is in jail after authorities say his, he shot his girlfriend. Plus, our Valley News Live DC Bureau catches up with Kevin Kramer to talk about a program he wants to save from the budget acts. 40 years of making homes energy efficient. I'm Peter Zampa on Capitol Hill, where groups from across the country celebrate a program helping lower income families. But first, Robert, after a gusty day, could we see some severe weather headed our way tonight? There is a chance of some severe weather, and there's some severe weather out towards the uh, Bismarck area as we speak. We're going to show you that here in just a moment. But here in the Fargo Moorhead area, a live look outside on the CorwinAuto.com Valley Sky Cam, part of the Storm Team Sky Cam Network. Sun setting, got some clouds out there, making for a very picturesque sunset here. In the next little while, current temperature still on the warm side, 71, and still a bit breezy out there. Winds out of the southeast at 13 miles per hour. Temperatures elsewhere, some 70s along and west of the Red River, off towards the east, some 60s, including a cool 63 in Wadena with some showers and sun thunderstorms into that area. On those winds, again, they're still kind of breezy out there, not as strong as they were earlier today, but still a bit of a breeze, and we'll see that breezy condition as we head through the overnight hours around 10 to 20 miles per hour. Some bright white clouds off towards the east and some big-time bright white clouds off towards the west, and we're going to show you all of those showers and storms involved with that here as we take a radar tour around the area. Off towards the east, some showers and occasionally some thunderstorms, although it looks like the lightning has decreased quite a bit with these as they make their way towards the Park Rapids area, the Monaga area, Sabika down towards, made its way through the Wadena area. Then it'll continue to slide off towards the east and weaken as it does so. But off towards the west, some showers, some thunderstorms, some of these strong and even severe big time storm making its way through the Bismarck area. And if we can take a live look on our Storm Team Sky Cam Network out in the Bismarck area. Most of the rain has moved through, but another wave of rain making its way on through. Quite a bit of lightning we've seen on this camera over the past few minutes as well as it continues to make its way off towards the east. Back to the radar, these are the storms that are going to continue to march across the state and give us a chance for some strong and maybe even severe storms in our neck of the woods later on tonight and into tomorrow morning. Numerous severe thunderstorm watches off toward the south and parts of South Dakota and Nebraska, for us, no watches out there. The only warning in the state is that storm well off toward the west, and that's for winds of 60 miles per hour. Outside of this area, most of the country pretty quiet. A few showers in the northwestern portion of the U.S., a few showers off toward the south and southeast, and a few showers in the northeast. Now, what's going to happen to these storms? They continue to make their way across the state. Yeah, they're going to blossom and make their way towards the uh, Fargo-Moorhead area and may see a redevelopment of another line ahead of that line that's out in the Bismarck area. And that approaching the Fargo-Moorhead area around 1, 1.30 in the morning. So 
If you are rumbled out of bed very early tomorrow morning, we'll be here. We'll let you know if anything gets out of hand and you tune into Valley News Live or just pick up that Valley News Live weather app and that'll tell you what's going on as well. Those showers and thunderstorms continue to make their way off towards the northeast. Could see some good amounts of rain. Could see a half an inch to an inch. Some isolated amounts up to two inches, not out of the question as we head through the rest of the uh, day tomorrow. We'll continue to see that rain make its way off towards the east and the northeast. Finally getting out of here by late tomorrow evening. There is that risk for severe storms. Higher risk off towards the south. Slight risk, even an enhanced risk down in parts of South Dakota, but a marginal risk for much of the area. And again, we'll be here to let you know if anything gets out of hand. By tomorrow morning here in Fargo, some rain showers, maybe a rumble or two of thunder. The stronger storms will have moved through by then. Lunchtime, maybe a sprinkle around, decreasing clouds slowly as we head through the afternoon. And by the end of the day, breezy and warm with a high around 80. Picture of the day. Thanks to Diane for sending this in. A sunset on North 10 Mile Lake. A beautiful shot that we're going to use as the background to our seven-day forecast. And again, stormy to start off your Wednesday, but by the end of the day, pretty nice. A quiet day on Thursday. More rain Friday and Saturday. But right now, the 4th of July is looking good. Not quite as hot as a firecracker, <laughs> but it's going to be hot out there. Well, it's nice. So you always want warmer weather on the 4th of July. Oh, yeah like the perfect recipe. Let's hope that holds up. I mean, that's a long way yeah. off, so that could change, but right now it's looking good. Awesome. Thank you, Robert. You got it. Another shooting incident in Minnesota has landed a Sabika man behind bars. This after sheriff's deputies say he shot at his ex-girlfriend. The Wadena County Sheriff's Office says early Monday morning, a woman called saying she had shot at her, had been shot at by her ex-boyfriend at a home in Sabika and was able to go to a neighbor's house to call for help. Deputies say the woman in indicated 37 year old William Sorella was drunk, became upset with her. She says he had a firearm and shot at her, but missed. Several more rounds were shot into the ground before she was able to leave. Law enforcement says Sorella surrounded without incident and was taken to the Wadena County Jail. And Glendon police are still trying to track down the person who shot at a police officer during a traffic stop late last night. Investigators tell Valley News Live an officer was on a routine traffic stop on Highway 10 just west of Glendon before midnight when he heard a bullet go over his head. Police say the gunshot appeared to have come from the area northeast of the officer. Several other officers and agencies came to the area to help in the search, but the shooter was not found. So if you have any information, you're asked to call Glendon Police. A Fargo police officer was called to check on a four-year-old who was thought to be neglected by her parents. The girl told the officer she was hungry, so the officer made the girl a sandwich and helped her put her shoes on before moving on to find her dad in the basement of the home. Deputy Chief Ross Renner says that's a common situation for officers. Sadly, they see a lot of children in bad situations and are committed to do what they can to help out. Those things that are happening, like making a sandwich, I'm not telling an officer that, hey, you should make a sandwich for a kid. You know, they're just looking at it from the standpoint of, you know, this is a kid that needs some food and I can help them for a brief moment. The father of the girl is now facing felony child neglect charges. It's a program meant to improve the life of low income families. The weatherization assistance program helps properly fit homes for energy efficiency. Celebrating the 40th year of the program, local community action groups are in D.C. showing off the success and future of weatherization. Our Washington Bureau's Peter Zampa attended the Weatherization Expo, where the program's latest technology was on full display. The Weatherization Assistance Program, keeping homes temperate for 40 years. Run by the Department of Energy, it has made millions of homes energy efficient across the U.S. But there are so, so many more homes that need to be done, and the importance of this program is going to continue to provide that safety net to households. Ken Robinette traveled from Twin Falls to display the importance of the program. Idaho winters are cold. Some people can't warm their houses. The program helps to properly insulate the homes, making the energy use efficient, bringing other savings. Health benefits, that actually more than doubles the benefit that we can get. Families are now in warmer homes, so they don't have to worry about having kids are sick because of cold homes. The budget proposal that President Donald Trump sent to Congress put the weatherization assistance program on the chopping block. Some lawmakers are saying it just fell victim to across the board cuts. The budget cutters at the White House are looking at 
programs, standalone programs within each of the agencies, and they see these chunks of money that they can eliminate. North Dakota Congressman Kevin Kramer says the president's mission to balance the budget is noble, but he thinks the Republicans need to make the conservative case for saving this particular program. We need to do a lot more to help educate them again on the savings that come with the weatherization assistance program that over the long haul it actually saves money in other programs. The program has seen widespread bipartisan support in the past. Congressman Kramer expects that to continue. Reported in Washington, Peter Zampla, Valley News Live. If you want to apply for the program, we've got a link up on our website. For that, go to valleynewslive.com. Fireworks go on sale starting today for North Dakotans, and with this season comes animals that flee from the sound of fireworks. Local pounds say they see an increase of missing pets from now until after July 4th. There are a few things to do to keep your pet calm, like keep them inside, away from windows, or use other products such as thunder shirts. If your pet does disappear, you should notify the local pound and even use Facebook groups that specialize in missing pets. Emailing all the vet clinics and shelters themselves if they want to get their pets information out there. Um, but like I said, the Facebook page, Facebook pages for lost pets are amazing in this area. Everyone's been joining them and keeping an eye out for pets. And lots of pets have been reunited on those Facebook pages. We posted additional information about what to do if your pet goes missing and other ways to keep animals calm. Again, for that, go to this story on our website. How are you going to do this year? Well, hopefully we're going to do a lot better than last year. He's got a mic on. <laughs> Carson Wentz answered tough questions, posed for pictures, even with some of Valley News Live's very own Lisa Badeau, signing autographs for his fan fans this afternoon at a special private event hosted by Shields. The Bismarck native turned Philadelphia Eagles quarterback met with 500 of his fans at the Avalon Event Center. Wentz has been in town for a few days, but today, a select group of fans lined up for a meet and greet with the former Bison great. 125 were chosen through Shields and were allowed to bring up to four guests to get one item signed by Carson. On tonight's restaurant report card, we have two different fast food restaurants. One is keeping up with the speed while the other has fallen behind. Valley News Team's Abby Furchner has our story. The fast food chain McDonald's is an easy place to get a meal any time of day, especially for the early birds who like to get a coffee with their breakfast sandwich. But for this health inspection, a brush that is used to clean the coffee pots was left in a sink that should only be used for employees to wash their hands. The supervisor of this location said that the problem has been fixed and a plan is set into place to make sure it doesn't happen again. Tropical Smoothie Cafe is this week's Clean Plate Award winner. Always keeping their ingredients fresh and keeping a routine in order is the secret to this fast food restaurant's success. We have checklists, um, mandatory everyday checklists that we keep up with um, our cleansiness of our store. Um, but like I said, it, most, it comes down to the staff. You know, they are, They're always on top of things. We're always um, making sure that everything gets clean day in and day out. For Restaurant Report Card, Abby Furchner, Valley News Live. To get a full report of the health inspections, go to our website and click on this story.